I have one of the coolest jobs in the world. As a product manager, I get to help take experimental research as well as prototypes and help turn them into consumer-facing features. Hi, everyone. I'm Zach. Howdy. <laughs> At Oculus, we strive to expand VR to the masses. We do this by making it more accessible as well as helping building experiences and features to help delight you, our users. I'm humbled to say that this community has been one of the most passionate, supportive, and vocal communities I've ever had the pleasure of being a part of. I first wanted to say thank you to all of you for helping us bring VR into the world. <laughs> this brings me back to why I'm before you here today. One of the most requested features to date has been the ability to access your RIP titles directly from your quest. And I'm very excited to announce that starting in November, <laughs> We are opening up Oculus Link as a beta to all of our Quest users. Yeah! Now, what does this mean for you? Included with the free update, you'll be able to seamlessly pair your Quest with your gaming PC. This will give you access to your Rift S library, as well as Oculus Home and Oculus Dash. All you'll need is a compatible USB 3 cable. Now. Let me be the first to tell you that this experience looks and feels great. But let's not forget about our developers. Oculus Link is also compatible with our Unity and Unreal integrations. You can now preview applications directly on your Quest just with the press of a button. We believe this will help lead to faster iteration times as well as development times and give you more time to focus on building great experiences rather than fiddling with APKs. And for those of you who want a premium PC VR experience, we've gone ahead and designed our own custom thin and flexible USB cable. This will be available for, on oculus.com sometime later this year. It'll be five meters long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, developing the technology to power this experience is no easy feat. I brought along two of my two amazing team members to help provide a deeper dive into how we've made this all possible. First, I'd like to introduce you to our lead system architect, Ben and Bastani. Thanks, Zach. Hi, everyone. We wanted to listen to you, our users, and bring a new set of values to your Quest devices. When we look at the PC and the Rift, we see a great catalog of content with many years of development behind it. We also see a strong graphics processor that can bring you a great high-fidelity VR experience. With Oculus Link, what we're bringing to you is a great catalog of content on Rift at high fidelity into Quest. However, it wasn't as simple as just connecting your Quest device to Rift. So we had to be creative and designing a pipeline in maintaining a VR experience while delivering the full content to you. The system we arrived at is a low latency custom rendering and streaming pipeline. The system was designed from ground up with full integration and optimization of the pipeline in order to make sure this is a great experience in VR. Here you're looking at overall architecture of Oculus Link. There were five major components we invested in. How the content gets rendered on PC side, what we encode, the streaming technology, how we decode it on the Quest side, and the fifth component, correct for any latency that may exist in the pipeline. So the way it works is the controller and tracker data is processed on the Quest side, streamed to the PC, Rift content gets rendered, it gets encoded, streamed over to the Quest side, Quest, the mobile Quest decoder decodes the content, gets it ready, and then, if there is any latency in the pipeline, we correct for that on the Quest side. So this pipeline may look simple enough, but there were key challenges in, in order to um, be resolved in order to make sure this is a great experience. There were three key ingredients in order to make um, Oculus Link a great experience. Visual quality, and more specifically, resolution. Reducing the latency in the pipeline, giving you the sense of presence, 
and play experience, making sure your physical experience is not limited. So I'll talk about why these topics were challenging, why they were important to resolve, and then give you a glimpse of where our investment happened in the overall pipeline. Then we'll dive deep into three important solutions that we introduced as part of Oculus Link. Visual quality, and more importantly today, I'm talking about resolution. Most of you are familiar how low resolution content looks like, right? The text is hard to read, the lines are jagged, and they may exhibit type of uh, aliasing and uh, crawling artifact, and overall, quality of the content is lost. In VR, if you wanted to make that a great experience, you have, to, you have to render high resolution content, right? And then send it from the PC to Quest side. But it's not easy, right? Because you're dealing with a lot of uh, system components. You have to encode it, send it over, decode it on the Quest side. And encoder may have its own limitation. The link between the PC and the Quest may have bitrate limitations. And then the decoder, it's a mobile decoder. It may have its own set of constraints. Um, so a, a typical solution people arrive at is let's compress the content, right? And as you can see as an illustration, the compression typically adds uh, a lot of artifacts, right? And those artifacts are actually more perceptible in VR. So we had to look at the overall system and we optimized the pipeline in order to make sure what we render is actually matching what we, we perceived in VR. It's a new rendering pipeline, encoding how we encode and what we encode and stream over the, over the link, and then optimizing the decoder so it's aligned with how the content gets rendered and streamed over. We'll give you a deep dive on one of the solutions for such technology later on. The second topic, latency. It's one of the important topics in VR, making sure the pipeline, the latency is minimum, give you, making sure we still can give you a great sense of presence in VR. Nothing's, nothing for me breaks the immersion in VR than like having your reactions and be out of sync with things you're doing, right? It's just like you lose a sense of uh, presence. It's, and it's one of the important topic in VR. But if you look at the, such a split architecture, rendering on PC side and doing processing on the Quest side, we may add a lot of latency if we just try to use it as it is. We try to encode, send it over, and decode it. So we had to make a full system optimization and more specifically optimize how we encode the content on the PC side and optimize the decoder in, rea in reaction with the, uh, with the PC encoder. And then we develop a new set of algorithms to mitigate any residuals latency that might exist in the pipeline. While giving you a great um, play experience, we try to correct for visual quality and latency. It was also important for us to make sure that we are not constraining your physical moving areas, right? And also we wanted to make sure that the link, the cable we provide you has great signal quality so we can deliver a smooth frame rate, a smooth content quality throughout the time. So when we look at the uh, solutions uh, out there to see what type of cables are available, we could not find a solution that meets all the criteria, right? Either the cables were long enough, uh, weren't long enough, or they may, uh, some of them were heavy, or they couldn't deliver a great uh, smooth experience. Thus, we developed Oculus Link Cable. We'll give you some detail about the information about the cable, the details of the cable. Now I'd like to pass it on to um, Reza Nurai, our graphics architect, who'll talk about some of the specific solutions we developed develop for the uh, Oculus Link. Thanks, Reza. Hi. Thanks, Benham. As you just heard, there were three main areas we had to invest in for Oculus Link to build a great VR experience. Visual quality, latency, and play experience. Let's first talk about visual quality. The high resolutions and high refresh rates that VR typically require pose a challenge for a lot of the video encoding and decoding hardware available on mainstream GPUs today. 
One simple solution is to just scale the whole frame down. That certainly fits within the resolution constraints of the encoders and decoders. But when you scale it back up, the loss in image quality is really apparent. Let's see an example. Here you see the image is scaled down. It's then encoded. It'll be transferred, decoded, and then scaled back up to form the final frame. When it's scaled back up, you'll see the loss in quality is really obvious. Instead of accepting that trade-off, we came up with a different approach. Rather than scale the full frame down, we leverage the fact that the periphery of your view is often impacted considerably by lens distortion. Maintaining full resolution in the central area, we apply a distortion curve to the periphery, effectively reducing the pixel density. This distorted image has a lot smaller total resolution, so it fits within the constraints of the video and decoding hardware, but yet it keeps quality where it matters most. We then take the, decoded, or the distorted image, we encode it, we transfer it, we decode it, since it now fits within our constraints, and then we straighten the image back out to form the final frame. We call this technique Axis Align Distorted Transfer, or AADT. Let's see it in action. The yellow region here is the central area where we want to maintain maximum quality. The outside area is the periphery where we're going to apply our distortion curve, effectively reducing the resolution by reducing the pixel density. This distorted image is smaller in total resolution, but hasn't lost quality where it matters most. It's then encoded, transferred, and decoded, and then we straighten it back out to form the final frame. Using AADT lets us fit within the resolution constraints that we have, but limit the loss in quality to the areas that don't matter out in the periphery where you don't notice them. One of the most, if not the most, issue, uh, biggest issues in VR is latency. And by latency, we mean the delay from when you take an action until you see the results of that action. Lots of latency can be extremely frustrating. The streaming solution that adds an encode step, a transfer step, and a decode step clearly adds extra stages to the pipeline, and in that format adds a lot of extra stalls, waiting for one step to complete and the next, which increases the total system latency. Quite a bit of time is spent waiting for each step to complete before the next step can begin. It's an extra long transfer there. So um, to address this, we came up with a new way of doing the encoding where we want to find some way to pipeline this. We wanted to find a way to reduce that. So what we started to do is transfer and decode portions of the frame while the rest of the frame is still being encoded. By doing this, we can begin the decoding process much sooner, which allows us to finish decoding the frame significantly earlier. Let's take a look at the two head-to-head. -head. On the top here, we have the traditional method, which encodes a full frame, then it transfers it, then it decodes it. And on the bottom, we have our approach of sliced encoding and decoding, where we'll begin the transfer and we'll begin the decode before the encoding step has completed. As you can see, because the decode starts much sooner, even before the original frame is finished encoding, we end up finished decoding the, the entire image significantly earlier. This reduces the total, uh, the total latency considerably. At Oculus, we take a holistic approach to designing products for you, our users. High visual quality and low latency are not the only things that make a good VR experience. Freedom of play and freedom of movement, light and comfortable experiences are all key factors of a good, good total VR experience. We searched for an existing cable that was long enough to give you the freedom of play, that was thin and light enough to be comfortable to use, and provided enough consistent performance that, you, that the, the overall experience would be desirable. We couldn't find a cable that solved all of those at the same time. So we built our own. The Oculus Link cable is thin, it's lightweight, it's long enough to give you freedom of play, and it gives a very consistent high performance. We determined an optimal length for a cable is at least five meters, but off-the-shelf cables of five meters or more are typically bulky and heavy. By using a fiber optic cable, the Oculus Link cable is long enough to give you that freedom of play, but it's also very thin and extremely light, so you barely feel it when you're playing. Having a cable hanging from the headset can also be a big distraction. It can get in the way of gameplay when you're playing. It can also put weight where it's undesirable. 
The Oculus Link cable includes a custom ergonomic solution that keeps the cable out of your way and shifts the weight where it's much more comfortable. These were just a quick glimpse at some of the things that we've done to make the experience great. We are uniquely positioned to do optimizations at every layer of the stack between both the PC and the standalone systems. And we leverage this to do deep system integrations that would not otherwise have been possible. An example is optimizing system services and drivers, such as for video decoding, to enable this unconventional use case. And yet another example is precise time synchronization for an adaptive frame pacing technique that allows us to keep continuously lowering the latency and minimizing latency while ensuring a smooth frame rate. I'd now like to invite Zach back to the stage to talk about Timeline. Good job. Thanks, Reza. First, I'd like to give another round of applause to the engineers who helped make this all possible. We're very excited to be opening up our public beta for Oculus Link coming this November via a free software update for the Quest and PC. You'll just need to provide your own cable. And once again, for those of you who, can't, who want to wait, the Oculus Link cable will be available for purchase online at oculus.com sometime later this year. We're really excited to be releasing this feature for you. Uh, if you haven't already, there's demos available in stations 38 and 39 where we're previewing Asgard's Wrath as well as Stormland, two unreleased Rift titles. Thank you again for joining us, and I look forward to seeing you all out there.